That's me behind the mic. I'm Professor Beth Evans. Actually, that's a picture of Beth Evans. You're a librarian. The person speaking? That's me. I'm Gabriela Miranda Diaz. Gabby's my friend. Well, kind of. Oh uh, yeah. Gabby and I know each other, and she's a student at Brooklyn College. Hold okay. The, hold the button and then say your boomer stuff. Oh, I have to say something like a boomer. Yeah, because I'm a boomer. Right. Hey, whoa, okay, love that boomer. Christmas. This is Professor Evans. Gabby's here to help me because I hate the sound of my voice. That's one of the problems with this whole new world of online teaching. You can actually hear how you sound to others. Hey, did you know that Adam Driver hates hearing clips of himself performing so much that he walked out on an interview with the world famous Terry Gross when she played a clip of him in the Netflix series Marriage Story? Who's Terry Gross? Terry Gross? Why, she's an interviewer from NPR, National Public Radio. She was born in Brooklyn and even went to Sheepshead Bay High School. I know people who went to Sheepshead Bay. Terry Gross has interviewed hundreds of famous people. Um, people like Kiss bassist Gene Simmons and um, Bill O'Reilly from Fox News and, and also Senator Al Franken. She herself is so famous they even make memes. Fallon really seems to have a thing for her. How many times has she been on his show? Kind of funny though, the interviewer being interviewed. Oh, I think Terry's up for it. Look how she handles that, and I even have a raccoon in there for you. NPR has great stuff on it. That's where I get practically all of my news and a lot of other information. Not me. You don't listen to NPR? How about the New York Times? Nope. Uh, watch network television? Not lately. So, where do you get most of your information then? Where do you learn about new things? Uh, well, I guess a lot of the stuff I hear comes from my friends, but I usually use Snapchat, Instagram, that kind of thing. Anything new I can find on one of those sites. I have a bit of a presence on Instagram myself that I'm trying to build, just to see what's out there and try to connect with similar people. Aha, uh -huh. so that is a good way to do it. But I um, was wondering, any presence on Facebook? Uh, I mean, I'm on there for the memes myself, but it's usually most of the users are uh, old people. <clears throat> old people aside for a moment. Oh, I didn't mean anything by that. No, no, of course not. No offense taken. But I'm really interested in how you go about finding out what's new. And besides, I was hoping you could do most of the talking, remember that, so I don't have to hear myself anymore. This never happens in a regular classroom, but for now we don't have that option. A lot sure has changed this semester. Sure it has. Makes you want to escape to a better place. Yeah, but most of the flights have been canceled. There's nowhere to go anymore. Where were you hoping to get to, Professor Evans? I was thinking that Utopia might be nice. Utopia? What's that? Isn't that a parkway in Queens? I prefer Brooklyn myself. No, Gabby, not that utopia. I'm picturing a perfect place like the utopia Thomas More envisioned. A perfect place? Yes, a utopia is considered a perfect place where everyone looks after the needs of everyone else and all are willing to share. Wouldn't you like to know more about utopia, Gabby? Yeah, I certainly would, especially now. I'd be happy to know more about a better place. Some place where the outlook look is a lot hopeful than here. Okay then, Gabby, let's begin our search. Where would you like to start? Me? Yes. Where would you like to go to find information about Utopia? Well, I guess where I usually go. I take a look on Google. It's really easy to search in Google. All you have to do is type in a word, or a few words, or even a sentence. Let me type in Utopia in the search box. Right away, you see the results. Google is great and almost always brings up millions of results. Uh, wow, that is quite a lot of results. But um, I'm wondering, do you look at all of them? No, of course not. I usually just look at what's on the first page, sometimes the second page. But I usually find what I want right on the first. Let's take a look. 
we scroll down we have definitions something from wikipedia some places look there's a map it looks like queens to me uh, more of a broken person myself and a business that uses the name utopia oh it's in brooklyn yay um but my question really gabby is is this is a lot of stuff but really is any of it useful sure i think wikipedia might have something well i thought it wasn't a good idea to use Wikipedia, and teachers are not always so happy with students using it. Yeah, I know that, but I usually find useful information in here, and the articles even have notes. Oh, so I see. You're scrolling down to the bottom, and um, there they are, the notes, and even below the notes I noticed uh, that they had references. Yeah, these are perfect, because you can tell what the author of the article found what they wrote about, and then you could read what they read. Well, that's definitely a good thing. Notes, um, or sometimes called a list of works cited, uh, also called a reference list. And you may remember the term in high school, the, your papers would have to have a bibliography. All those lists are always useful for doing further research. Say, Gabby, have you ever thought of becoming a Wikipedia author yourself? You no, know, how would I do that anyway? Well pretty easy to write a new article or even to change something that's in there. Wait, you're a librarian? This can't be for real. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on, Gabby. It's so easy, and it's, it's really fun. I feel so wicked doing this. You know what? I kind of like uh, the jib of your jab there. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, Gabby, not really. Um, I mean, yes, I see I made a change, but it can completely invalidates information in this article. So I'm going right back in and I'm going to fix that uh, little bit of mischief and make it the way it was originally. Let's publish that instead. Lame. Well, let's see what we can get in the Google search results. There are a lot of other sites here that might be useful. Let's take a look now. Going back and back and we're so close. Okay. Yup, there we go. Got it. All right. Let's see what's here. Okay. Scroll down a bit. See what else is here besides what we looked at already. Huh. There's a link to the British Re Museum Library. Okay. That definitely sounds like an authoritative source. Click on it and take a look at that page. Ah, seems to have um, different themes related to utopianism. Back to the results though. See what else is there. Anything catch your eye? Oh, that's what I like. I like that, that's Project Gutenberg. Gutenberg is wonderful. It's a website that has complete books that are free and open access because they're very old and they're not in copyright anymore. Isn't it great when you can find free books on the internet? Yep, pretty amazing. But let's see if there's anything else. Huh, this looks pretty interesting. It gets right down to some controversy about the book. Yes, and it's a pretty reliable source. It's The Guardian. That's a, br a British edited publication. And it's something you can trust. So uh, the search at Google was pretty useful. Not a bad way to go. But what if you wanted to find out more about the book itself, Gabby, and skip over the nail salons? What could you do? I go to Google Scholar. Ah, yes, the educated Google, the Google that can point you to academic research. And wow, they've got academic research on hot topic COVID-19 right there. It's pointing us to Lancet, which is a very prestigious and old general interest, general interest medical publication from England. It's over 200 years old, and uh, I see there's a mix of things. Articles, um, comments, correspondences. Uh, each of those has a different level of value. The article would be the most complete. So let's see what we can find in Google Scholar about our topic, Utopia. Not a bad idea to get away from COVID-19 for a while. It looks like Scholar offered some suggestions of its own. And uh, let's accept this one. It's looking for utopia and dystopia, which is the opposite. And uh, those are places that make people's lives miserable. I like that Scholar gives us links to full text articles. 
Yes, that's great. We can take a look here. And, um, you know, Gabby, you can even set up Scholar to tap into Brooklyn College Library resources. And let me show you how that's done. We go up to the top left on the page and click on what I've heard is called a hamburger here that opens up to all its layers and click on settings. And then we cho choose library links. You can type in Brooklyn College because that's the library that you're most likely to be using. And what Google Scholar will do after you set that up for Brooklyn College is it will attach the results to full text articles in the Brooklyn College Library. So Google Scholar can get us right to journal articles. How about we make the Google Scholar search more precise? Add in the author's name. Sure, we can do that, Gabby. Let's just get back up into that search box. We'll take out dystopia and add in Thomas Moore, the author of the book Utopia, the one that we saw in Gutenberg that interests us. Okay, we'll put his name in. And let's take a look at the results. Okay, um, you'll notice as we scroll down the screen, Gabby, there's something that really interests me about Google Scholar results. They have cited by links, and these show you who actually read the article and included a citation to the article in his or their own writing. So it's a good way to see how literature progresses through the years. Seems like a great way of verifying research. So tell me, Professor Evans, what can the library do that will be even more of a help to me? Let's take a look in the library site. We can search for it through Google. Um, in the actual library building, our computers are set up to go right there. And um, one of the things to keep in mind about a library search is that you're going to be able to trust the information you find there. Something that people are so concerned about these days is whether or not information is fake. So that word's being thrown around a lot, and we hear about fake news every day. Well, so you're saying that we should always be careful about the truth of the information you find. I get that, but how will we begin our library search? You can see that the library has a big search box in the center that's called OneSearch. You can type in the search terms there and see what it comes up. It's sort of like Google in a way. There really are a lot of search results. Yes, that's true. We have hundreds of thousands rather than millions like we have in Google, but there really are quite a few. Huh. Is that what the filters do? Um, well, what the filters do is let you narrow down your search so we won't have hundreds of thousands to look at. The top filter will let you zero in on peer-reviewed articles. I noticed that all the peer-reviewed articles are marked with a peer-review icon and label. So what does that mean if an article is peer-reviewed? That icon is like a mark of quality. It's your assurance that this is something worth reading. Peers are your equals in a situation. A researcher's peers work in the same line of research as the person whose article they are reviewing. The peers review a writer's article before it is published. They look it over and make suggestions for how the article can be improved. What are some of the other ways you can filter search results in OneSearch? You can specify a date range for your results. Oh yeah, that would be very useful. I remember when we looked at the Google Scholar results for COVID-19 and found very recent articles on the illness. That's right. For some subjects, finding the most recent material is very important. That's especially true in the sciences and social sciences. Not so much in the humanities. In fact, for a subject like ours, Utopia, or the Thomas More book in particular, sometimes looking at historical results can be as valuable or more valuable than recent research specific information about Utopia in Thomas More's book, we can add his name to the search. Yes, definitely. That helps make the um, results even more precise. See? Look, a lot better. Books and articles on the topic. Let's look at one of these articles. Um, let's see. Here's one that refers to a whole conference built around More. The Thomas More Studies Conference. Where do you see that one? It's third one. Oh, okay. I 
see that. Yep, I agree. A Thomas More conference probably would have a uh, be an occasion for a lot of research to be presented on that author and most likely on Utopia. So let's click on that one. Well, the internet's taking a while. Yeah, that happens at home. It happens on campus. So now I feel like I'm at home back on campus. But we can be patient and see what comes up. Give it a little nudge again. And there we are. Finally. You will see um, that a lot of information is attached to this article. In the area called description, which is sometimes referred to as an abstract, there's a little summary of the article, and that gives you a quick idea of whether or not you want to pursue it. Huh. I like that they give you the citation written the way you're supposed to put it in your papers, either in APA or MLA format. That's true. That is a really helpful a bit of information. You can also get the full article, but because we're working from home now and everybody's working from off campus, we will have to log in. I'll put in my login, but anyone else, students, can see information on how they can do their own login. There's information for faculty and staff as well. There the internet goes again. Uh, it's a little slow now because it's going through something called a proxy server, sort of like a funnel. And with so many people working off campus, we're all trying to get through the tip of that funnel together to get to the library site and the resources. Oh, here it is. Hmm. This doesn't look like much of an article to me. I have to agree with you. It really is quite brief. Let's go back to the results and see if we can find anything a little more substantial. So click out that single result, and we can scroll down, or we can uh, limit it to peer-reviewed again, right? Absolutely. I'm glad you remembered. Uh, anything interesting here? Uh, Thomas More in America. I like to look at that one, and it's a journal called Utopian Studies. It should be perfect. Yeah, that kind of intrigues me, too. Thomas More in America? Hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look. Uh, we'll, full, we'll click on that full text link and see if this is a bigger article, a, a kind of deeper article than the last one. Oh, it's JSTOR. I've heard of this before. A teacher, a teacher once mentioned it. Ah, that's, that's true. Many of the articles in the library collection are included in JSTOR, a database of journals that dates back to the beginning issue of any journal it includes. So here we are at the article now. You'll notice, Gabby, as we scroll through, and this is my tendency always, is to see what what's at the end of the article, or as we talked about earlier, the work cited. I'm sure that has to be your favorite part. And it's kind of like in Wikipedia. Sure is, just like in Wikipedia. Uh, only with this article, no one could go in and mess around and make changes. Then I guess I could trust OneSearch a lot more. It looks like it would bring me more of a, the scholarly articles that I need. Um, and if for some reason you can't find what you need in OneSearch, Gabby, check out the library research guides. I'm going to head back over to the library screen. I see. It looks like there's one for every major in the college. That's right. The library has a guide for every major because the paper you are writing in English 1012 will not be the only research paper you will write. These library guides can show you the best way to do research, no matter what your topic is. I'm a health sciences major. Let me take a look. Okay, we can choose the health sciences research guide. It's one of the subheadings here. And click on that. It takes us right to the guide. Oh no, it's not more about the coronavirus. It seems to show up everywhere. Yeah, that's a science news feed on this guide. But, um, you know, Gabby, don't be so worried because having the information you need can give you some control. In fact, good information like the articles and databases that are here will really help you. That's great, Professor Evans. I feel a lot better knowing that I have these library databases. One search or any of those ones on the page will help me get the information I need. I guess that's about it for now. Thanks for tuning in all, and good luck with your research. Happy researching, and watch out for the Rona!